Hello and welcome to a new project that we're going to be starting. This is the Lonely Man Podcast. It is me, only me, and just me. Uh, so we're going to be basically just going through a couple things and just nattering, and that will be a new thing that I'd be doing on this channel, which I'm definitely consistent on. Uh, I think for now the plan is to maybe drop the engineering stuff and move into a bit more of a vlogging, bit more doing thing channel rather than the engineering thing because I think realistically I'm not bringing anything new to the table as of yet but I'm going to work on things in the background that I may just show them off in other forms through this podcast or through just other videos where I show them off. But today, today we're going to be talking about something I have been doing which is making gin. It's a weird one but I've been using, if I grab this, this kit here it is the gin makers kit, and it is actually quite good. So, the way that you do it through this way though is different to how it's normally done now for making something like this one. Uh, so this is just a, a very nice raspberry gin, very good. Um, but the way that we do it for these kits is actually through something called compound distilling. So, you'll take yourself, I've got so many examples, you'll take yourself a small little mason jar, something like this, uh, and then you will fill it with what is called botanicals. But the first thing you fill it with is, if I can grab the bag, juniper berries. So, juniper is actually the taste of, um, it's the taste of gin in general. You don't really get anything that tastes more like gin than juniper. So if I open this bag up a little bit, Ooh, let's not try and spill any. So they come here and they're like dried little berries. If I can see if I can get one to ooh, focus a little bit. Kind of. Um, and they are, they're, yeah, they're, they're just berries realistically. Um, and what you're doing with these is you take a load of these and you chuck them in the jar. And then you fill this jar with vodka. Just a very cheap, very bog standard vodka. You close it up and you leave this for, I think, around two weeks. Um, the longer you leave it, the more um, the more it will taste of juniper. And it will be a stronger gin flavour, basically. Uh, we'll take that out there. Oh no, his hand is stuck. That's no, fine. Um, you know what, while, while I'm here, let's try something. Let's. I've not actually tried doing this. Let's just see. Fun fact, I don't know if junipers are bad to eat. Let's Google that while I chew on this disgustingness. Junipers. A berry. Okay to eat. Safe to eat. Okay. <laughs> it's about 50-50. Some are fine. Um, it's not the nicest taste, but actually, it's kind of sweet. Very earthy though, kind of sweet. Um, it was a real rogue move to do that live. I say live, just while I'm recording. Um, mm, yeah, it's an interesting flavour. Doesn't really taste like gin when you eat it. <laughs> just tastes really bad. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, it's really just stuck in my teeth and horrible. Okay, I'm just gonna have to live with that now. <laughs> so you can get other kits like this as well, which is a similar kit, but what it has in it is you you basically, instead of doing it the way that this kit asks you to do it, which is with this kit, you distill with the junipers first, the compound distilling, which means just, compound distilling literally just means letting that vodka soak up the flavors. So with this one, yeah, you put the junipers in first for a longer time period, which gives it that really strong gin taste, and then you put in your botanicals, and that's what gives you then extra flavours and stuff. You can just do the juniper, and you'll just have a very standard gin, but flavours are nice. Whereas this one, all you're supposed to do is you're supposed to... I think... Somewhere. You're supposed to peel off the top. Fill this with vodka, put the seal back on, and then whenever you go to serve it, there's this handy little strainer, and you will just pour it into the strainer to make sure you don't get any um, any botanicals in there. So botanicals 
can range for quite a few things. Really depends on what you're after. For example, this kit. Hmm, I'm really sorry. This tastes horrible. Um, this kit gives. Let me get the little instruction manual up instead. Because it explains what's in them. So this kit gives. A little, little bit of reading here. Gives a botanical base, which has just uh, coriander seeds, a bit of allspice, orange peel, and lemon peel. Um, then you can put some cacao nibs in as an extra thing, which doesn't sound that nice to me, because apparently that'll just give a dark chocolatey flavour. Doesn't sound nice in gin. Uh, then they've got hibiscus and rose. Some, another one has just lemongrass and lemon peel. Another one is just orange peel. Then one of them is dried ginger. And then another is just Christmas spices, which are just like um, cinnamon, ginger, all of that sort of stuff. So, it's quite a nice variety that you get, but... I've already done it. Here's, here's one I made earlier. Um, this one, actually, I put a little bit of hibiscus in uh, and the rose flower, because I wanted this color. It comes out very yellowy and it's still quite yellowy, but this is kind of leaning towards a little bit more pinky, which is kind of what I was after. I didn't really like the yellowy look, but that's how, of course, when you get clear gin from the supermarket is because they've done the vapor distilling, which doesn't take any of the color. So, and then they use coloring otherwise. So, for example, this one here, that while the bottle is pink, the actual liquid is quite dark as well. Um, and they will, of course, have a way to add that dark colour in. But it's turned out quite nice, actually. Um, I should have had something prepared to sample this with, which I don't. Oh, but I do. I do, I do, I do. Because the kit comes with a lovely little pipette. So, let's pipette some of this out and try it just straight shall we let's just get a little bit lovely and so it's very strong i did leave the um the junipers there for a while i quite like a strong gin anyway um and then i went for quite a citrusy flavor i used more of the citrus um that away for now. I used a lot of the citrus flavours and then with the rose just to get it a bit more coloured. And I think it's quite nice. If it worked perfectly with a little little bit of tonic. I'm not a huge straight alcohol drinker as is, but um, I think it's quite a nice little, little kit and they're quite fun to do. I'm looking forward to experimenting with this one. This one I think... So it has juniper in it, cardamom seeds, allspice berries, coriander, chamomile, lavender, bay leaf in it. So this will be an interesting one to taste. We'll maybe try and get that one done for the next one. So anyway, talking about the next one actually, because we're just going to keep just ramming things in. I don't really plan to have any consistency to this podcast besides maybe length of time, which I'm thinking maybe around half an hour for now, which seems like a relevant amount of time. Uh, it's mostly just going to be me nattering. I will also be streaming again. Oh, do you know what? Let's, before I lose myself, consistency. I'm useless at consistency on this channel. As you can probably see when you scroll back through the videos, there's a lot of blocks and a lot of videos called I'm back. Um, I'm not really going to title this one that. I'm just going to title this Lonely Man Podcast Episode 1. Straight to it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to hope to try and do these weekly. I think it'd be a very nice thing to do weekly. And I'm going to hope to try and find a couple other things that I can put on this channel a bit more consistently and weekly. Possibly some gaming videos. This channel's just going to become a big cacophony. Yeah, big cacophony of um, ideas and fun, realistically. And I'm just going to just be doing what I want to do on it rather than trying to stick very strictly to maybe trying to make a engineering project and struggling to fit it into my time frame. I am just going to do what I enjoy and do what makes me happy. And I'm just going to sort of start throwing things on the channel. And I think that will help with me a bit more consistently uploading. And it will also help with me um, actually receiving feedback on this channel, which I love to have, to be fair. I know I get quite a lot of comments from my father on this channel, so I will say a little shout out and a hello to him because I'm sure he will watch this. Whether he will make it almost nine minutes in, I reckon he will. He's watched some of my other videos that were longer. Um, so yeah, the plan is to basically try and be a bit more consistent with uploads. This will be weekly and then I might try, I'm not going to overstretch myself at the start and oversell, but I might try and then do another video 
in between in the week. So we'll find a nice day for me to record and upload this. I've only just decided to do it now because it was an idea that came last night and I was like, you know what? You, you've got to just do it and you've got to give it a go. So we're here. So yeah, so that will be happening now. Hopefully two videos a week. Realistically, so far, I'm promising one. And that promise is very steep, I imagine, because of course I have undersold and missold before on the amount of videos I will be uploading. Now, uh, talking then back about the streaming, I have been streaming uh, this entire time, sort of more almost streaming than uh, I have been doing YouTube videos. So I'm on Twitch, uh, same name, just Oliver Dejean, um, and I'm there, I'm doing gaming videos. I have not actually been doing it for a while again, because I'm bad at consistency. So I'll be jumping back on that as well, um, which is why I don't want to overpromise on the videos. I may start to record some of the streams and cut them down into good videos, or maybe just upload some of the highlights and the clips on this channel, just so that if you're not really keen to watch late at night, maybe like a two, three hour stream, you can catch up with either the funny parts or maybe the whole stream um, on my YouTube channel. And then at least you've got a chance to view the content. Um, I don't fully know how I want to plan that yet, but if I, ca if I do end up doing just like full streams, uploading them, you'll probably get more videos on this channel as well. Cause I was initially, I have set up a separate gaming channel because it seemed relevant, but now I think it's, um, it's a lot harder to maintain too. I've uploaded no videos on the other channel and uh, sparse videos on this channel. So we're gonna keep going with that for now. With this podcast, I plan to talk about all sorts of little things that I've been doing. Um, I'll maybe even throw clips of stuff that I've done um, throughout the week and everything if I do anything funny. Um, but at the same time, I might just keep those clips for vlogging videos, I don't know. Uh, but we plan to try and just sort of natter for about an, a half an hour or so. I'm not going to promise an hour because I doubt I could do an hour's worth of nattering on my own. But half an hour seems at least semi-possible. Uh, I think we'll we'll slowly invite guests and stuff. So like friends and everything will pop on and we'll see where it develops. Maybe it becomes a podcast that I do with another person consistently. But for now, it's very much just me. I'm here I'm going to talk to you and natter to you and you can listen. I might try and upload it to other platforms. I don't know if there's any reason for me to do that yet. I might wait until maybe I've hit a goal or had a certain amount of these podcasts out to put it somewhere else because I'm pretty sure most other places will charge just for the audio. And I don't mind having the video aspect. It doesn't really bother me. I am literally just sat at my desk staring at my camera. So it doesn't really bother me. And I've got the, the microphone just off screen here, kind of off screen. Now it's off screen. I'm sure that's fully messed with the audio and I appreciate having done that. Um, but yeah, so we'll sort of just sort of start nattering again. Uh, I had that little intermin interim where I talked about everything that's going on. We'll just keep talking about other little bits that uh, have been going on. So I popped down to Devon recently. For anyone that doesn't know, I am from Devon. Um, so I went down on the 13th to the 16th, so it's the 17th when I'm doing this. Really good to date things so that people can know I'm semi-professional and consistent. Um, and yeah, I popped down there and it was really great fun. I had a whole trip planned where I was just sort of, uh, bouncing around a couple places, just sort of going to see it because it's been almost, or not even almost, it's been way over a year since I've gone to see my family because of obviously COVID and stuff, which is always a thrill when you don't get to see someone for a long time and then you can just pop down. It's nice, I've got a little car, so I took the journey. It is a long drive. Driving for me is something that I really do enjoy. I like driving, but it's four hours roughly from here. So it's a long drive and you're just sat still. You are just sat like this. Oh, I've bashed everything. Uh, you are just sat, just dead still. And like for motorway driving, you are literally just hands on the steering wheel, one foot on the accelerator. You've not really got much else to do, really. It's a bit boring. I like driving, but I think I appreciate driving more when there's a little bit more to do. I think motorway driving tends to lean towards the boring side for me. And it's just not that fun. Um, but I guess like some people quite enjoy it. Some people quite enjoy just a really chill drive like that where like there's not much to do and you can just put your foot on the pedal. I was craving a Tesla though 
a Tesla would have been a fantastic thing to have during uh, that drive because you can just like you it's like double tapping like a pedal or something on the side of the wheel and it goes into autopilot and you can just take your foot off of the the accelerator you've got to keep your hands on the steering wheel obviously but i think you can sort of keep them a bit lower and like, it's easy and then you can just chill and just have like a bit more of a nicer time admittedly of course you can't do a huge amount right now it's not like i could read a book or anything because the the law and like the safety regulations say like oh you have to at least still be consciously holding the wheel and at least watching a little bit. It kind of takes away from the self-driving a little bit that you have to um, have to keep watching and have to keep sort of your eye on the ball because then it's like, I may as well just drive this, but at least I guess you're not having to like uber stress yourself out a little bit. I don't know. It seems a bit... Um, Seems a bit redundant for now, but it would still be very nice to have. And I think it'd be wonderful to see a day when more people have them and more people are just using them. Because the more people that have them, I imagine the regulations will start to climb down a little bit. And then you'll be able to um, actually, you'll be able to actually just let your hands go. And maybe you'll even be able to um, almost turn your seat around and talk to passengers behind you. Because, of course, the more cars that are on the road that use the same automated driving system will then lead to like improved safety because they'll all be able to communicate with each other and know like oh i'm in this lane i'm in this lane i'm in this lane let's not all merge together and cause a horrendous crash and pile up um so yeah hopefully that is something that we lead towards in our future i mean as an engineer anyway i have a invested interest in wanting to see technology just go a bit further because I quite enjoy it anyway and I like seeing those advancements and just sort of being able to talk about them which is why I brought it up here a little bit I haven't actually seen anything otherwise than I haven't really seen anything new that I uh, would talk about right now I, I just like talking about Teslas I'd always want one I think I think a lot of people want one right now I like the the big 4x4 one I think the 4x4 one is quite a cool one um, I just like the size of it um, I've got quite a little car right now. I've got a Vauxhall Corsa. So it's a tiny car in comparison to what one of those are. But um, I think they're nice. I think they're designed quite nice. I've seen a lot of news recently because they mass fabricate them. And of course, like, you get to customize them. So they're almost made to order. I think they are made to order. Well, they, are, they have to be. They can't have every version of customization. So they're made to order um, and they send them out. And because of the speed that they're having to do it at, a lot of them are coming with, like, little bits of defects and stuff. Which isn't, of course, like, the greatest thing. Um, they come, like, a little bit creaky and stuff. But uh, as far as I've seen, I've seen someone go through the whole process of buying one. And you just go through and you actually... Um, when you pick it up, you go through and you look at all these things. And they do a full check with you. And you can, like, push at things and stuff in case anything's wrong. I think I can see the issue with it, of course. Because they're, like, £100,000 cars. And if you're having to, like, get a creaky one, it's a bit of an annoyance and stuff. And if you have to wait longer, it's still more of an annoyance. But overall, I still think it's not the worst um, service. But I could be wrong. I could be very wrong, and I just, I could be dumb. I've not bought a Tesla. I think if anyone here has, uh, tell me about it. But at the same time, I, I don't think anyone here has bought a Tesla, considering my, my audience is very small right now. But if in... 10 years time in 2031 if I'm still doing this and you've bought a Tesla in 2021 or any time realistically tell me about your experience it'd be cool wouldn't it to do be doing this for 10 years I think it'd be a very cool thing to try and do and I'd love to continue doing this and sort of make something out of it a bit more um, it's very difficult obviously and it's very competitive because who doesn't want to be able to chill at home and just sort of get paid for I don't know, just talking to a camera and playing games and stuff. It'd be quite fun. But for now, uh, we just push on and we see what we can do. Um, I think that would be a real a real dream, either to be like a professional streamer or YouTuber. I think they go hand in hand, though, realistically. I think when you do one, you can do the other one quite successfully as well. So it's kind of the same goal. So we're going to set that goal for now. I think, where are we at? So let me pull it up. I think if I look at my YouTube channel right now, which it's dire. If we go on to my YouTube studio, right? And I know monetization is very hard on YouTube, uh, purely for the fact of um, they they do make it quite hard. I can I think I can reveal this, so it's fine. Um, so to be a YouTube partner, you need 
to get in 12 months 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 public watch hours, right? So to break that down, you would need... The, if you get the 1,000 subscribers, say I got that today, I'd need all of them to watch an hour-long video four times to be able to become a partner in YouTube. And then you can get paid with YouTube, which is why YouTube's such a difficult platform to work with. Because if you say, say I get the, say I manage to get the 1,000 subscribers and I get 3,999 public watch hours, if the next day is my 12 month gap, I have to start all over again. I need to get another 1,000 subscribers and another 4,000 public watch hours. So currently, to put that in perspective, I have 20 public watch hours and 34 subscribers. I mean, I'm not a regular um, contributor to this platform, but my like my best video is about 66 views and it's a 12 minute video. So it's not great, but these longer videos hopefully will help with getting that watch hour time up. And I think like it would be an amazing thing to be able to hit a YouTube partner. So big aim number one, let's talk about my aims. Let's talk about my aims. I need a whiteboard. It's in the living room, in fact, so that's a bit of an annoyance. But aim number one, let's get ourselves to YouTube uh, partner. Very long-term aim. Let's break that down a little bit, though. Let's get 100 subscribers. That's a bit more reasonable. We're on 34 now. Um, I'm going to say we want to go for 134 because I reckon I'm very close to that 12-month like cut off. So let's get to let's get to 134 subscribers. Let's ignore the watch hours for now. We can try and boost those later. But the benefit is right now I can use Twitch as a bit more of an income source because I'm actually a affiliate on Twitch. So when you become affiliate on Twitch, it's a bit easier to become an affiliate. And I'll take you through that process now as well because I find it quite interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that one will be fine to open. Yeah, this takes me to my dashboard. Although I'm having a little bit of an internet issue right now. There we go. Uh, so let's go to uh, da, 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 da. channel analytics, I think it is. No, stream summary. Achievements, there we go, sorry. So, to become a partner, to become a partner in Twitch is a lot harder. We'll go through the steps though. So when you start a Twitch career, uh, you need to become an affiliate is the first step to being able to earn money. When you are an affiliate, you can run ads and then you can also take uh, get subscribers, which is great. Uh, so to become an affiliate, you need to get 50 followers. You need to stream for eight hours, stream on seven different days and have an average of three viewers. And this has to be over a 30 day period. So the nice thing about the way Twitch does it though, is say you hit 50 followers, and the 50 followers doesn't have to be over a 30 day period, which is nice. But say you stream for seven hours over six different days and you've averaged your three viewers, for example. If you pass that 30 day period, it only takes the last day off of that 30 day period. So now you've just got another day to add that extra bit in. So it's very nice and it's a very, it's a lot easier to become an affiliate on Twitch um, which allows you to start earning a little bit of revenue. Whereas to become a partner, it's a lot more difficult. You need to stream for 25 hours over a 30 day period, so stream on 12 different days and average 75 viewers. So to give you reference to where my stats are, at, I haven't streamed in a couple weeks, uh, but my stats are about, I'm at five average uh, hours streamed. Uh, I've streamed on two out of 12 different days and I've got an average of about four viewers. So that's a hefty goal um, to get 75 average viewers. So I think as hopefully this channel grows, I will also be able to grow my streaming and sort of benefit myself both. Uh, for now, I think we're going to sort of just keep doing like fun little clips on this channel. Uh, I might even start a series, a gaming series of something I don't fully know yet. Maybe I'll run through the new Mass Effect game because I know that's out. But um, I'll take I'll take comments and criticisms. Whatever people want to see, I'd be willing to give a shot, sort of thing. Um, and we're gonna try and sort of keep pushing for new and fun things. Uh, I'll start filming myself as I go out and about more. I mean, I've everyone's got a phone now. It's very easy to be able to film your life and develop it into a vlog without like a big vlogging camera. 
So I think the nice thing about that is, yeah, I can film things, film clips, and I can make a vlog outside of this room. Um, I know I've done previous vlogs outside, and I quite enjoyed them. I don't do a huge amount, of course, right now, because it's COVID, and that was a bit of a slowing point for doing it, but I've got a move coming up soon. I've got to move out of this house soon, so that'll be something I could vlog. I know I vlogged technically my last move, Christ, which was almost a year ago now. Um, I did vlog just the finishing touches of that one. But I could vlog a bit more and make it a bit more relevant. I think I'm going to be doing some more fun things, going out for meals and stuff, and just sort of living my life a little bit more. So I think that'll be stuff that I can then show off and do, and I might try and do some more adventurous things. I've got a blacksmithing course coming up, in fact. I've got a one-day experience to make a knife uh, coming up uh, on the 26th of July. And I'll be going over to do that. That is one thing I will be vlogging. And there will be lots of interesting videos on that, I think. Um, I think that can break down into... It's a whole day. Like, I think I start at 9 and I finish at 5. Like, a, a full day's experience. So, I'll definitely be vlogging that as a part of... Damn, this is cool. Uh, and I may even do some cutting stuff at the end uh, in, like, another video. So it might be that I split that probably into two parts because it's quite a lot of filming, I imagine. And then we'll do a little cutting test in another video, which I think would be really cool and fun. Uh, I'm actually doing that with Owen Bush, I think at Bushfire Forge, I want to say. That's, I think, what it is, but don't reference that because I haven't actually got the, the website up in front of me. I'm going to, I think this format's worked quite well for this podcast. Uh, just being able to whip the website up because I've got two monitors. So you're on top of... Oh my god, that was a big peak. I just punched my microphone. We're going to get professional. Don't worry. Uh, but for now, I've got you on this monitor and I have myself on this monitor and I can just sort of whiz around doing little bits, which I think works quite well for a solo podcast. I don't see a lot of solo podcasts, realistically, because it's kind of a weird format. It has literally just been me talking for now, like... 27 minutes about absolute random junk um but that's what this is that is the lonely man podcast summed up uh into one whole cube of existence and why am i here who knows but that's what this is for i think if you guys want me to natter about things if you want me to talk about a topic chuck it in the comments we'll have a i'll have a little talk about it with you there and we can bring it up on here i really don't mind i've quite I would, I'd like to say that I'm quite a versatile person and I can look things up and I can at least become minorly knowledged, knowledged, knowledgeable in a certain area. Like, I mean, the gin thing, for example, like this was like just a bit of reading, um, learning that it's compound distilling and stuff. And it's quite a fun little topic just to talk about. Hey, juniper berry, it tasted really bad. Um, sweet, but bad, if that makes sense. Um, I wouldn't advise eating juniper berries. Um, I wouldn't advise, honestly, doing anything that I talk about on here. I imagine a lot of the stuff I say is probably quite unfactual and quite dumb. But I think that is sort of where I sit in a nice point. You've got, like, informational podcasts. You've got, like, entertainment podcasts. And you've got, like, shit-talking podcasts. And I'm right in the middle, I feel. I feel like that's where, that's where I want to really thrive. In the sort of, like, not really informational, kind of entertaining kind of shit talking because I don't know what I'm talking about right there right in the center clearly it's not for children after I've just said shit talking and shit a couple times I don't think I've sworn the entire 30 minutes but I've really just ruined this for the kids right at the end uh should I start beeping myself out should I get a little beep button where I can just slam it and say a swear word that would be cool we might have to look into that that would be very fun or at least more things I think props and stuff I think when I move to my next place, I'm going to set myself up a little bit better for maybe a bit more of a streaming setup and a bit more of a vlogging setup and a bit more of like this setup because I think it would be nice to have a bit of a better background. I had ideas, but instead what I've got is, ooh, wrong way, two, two dressing gowns and an ironing board. It's not thrilling as a background. I've got some LEDs. Ooh, I'm a big special person putting up a strip of LEDs. Um, so yeah, we'll try and make a bit of a better background, maybe incorporate my my OD logo in there somewhere and just sort of try and have a bit of a more 
yeah, I don't know, more useful, more interesting background behind us because I think then it will help enhance my production value, which of course I need considering this is, well, this is nothing. <laughs> Anyway, I think we've done 30 minutes, so yeah, 30 minutes in like a couple seconds. So I think we'll wrap it up there for the first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you have a thrilling day and I will speak to you next week and you will hear more of my yammerings. Thank you very much, everyone.